time, I think, for a haircut and uh, a bit of a shave. Well, not really, but what a silly way to introduce a segment with eyes in the back of my head. Not really, because some animals do have them, although they can't see any more than these can. Nonetheless, eyes in nature are extremely important because they're very attention-getting and they attract the attention of the hunters. And they have two main roles. Firstly, if I went attacking something and it opened these huge eyes and looked right at me, I might very well think twice about it and buzz off because the chances are it's a big animal that might eat me. So big eyes would be frightening. On the other hand, if I'm going for something I want to eat and I see little eyes, that might be the bit I attack because it's the head and it's the most vulnerable part of the animal. And so if I see little eyes, I might go for them and attack them first. And little eyes attract attack. Well, animals that really disguise their real eyes have nonetheless got false eyes in many places, like moths. If I open up this jar and don't let it fly away, you'll see inside there a granny moth which has eye spots of a most beautiful kind out on the wingtips. Very big blue ones, you can see there. One there and one on the other wing. And they look for all the world like the eyes of an owl. And if the moth flutters around like that, it is to a hunter, perhaps something like a cat or an owl, to be avoided. And a small bird attacking that moth might well decide to buzz off and try something else. So those big eye spots are protective. They protect the moth from being eaten because they look as if the moth is really quite dangerous. Not as dangerous, though, as the emperor gum moth, a splendid big creature if it doesn't fly away. Let's open up its box and have a look inside here. Remove the lid and lift it up. And there it is, a really beautiful big moth. You can see that those wings look like dried leaves. I say he because those big feathery antennae are the male moth. They collect the scent of the female. But if a bird comes along and attacks this, it gets a shock. Look. Suddenly, those hind wings flash open and very big eye spots are revealed. A bit like an owl opening up its eyes and saying, who are you? I'm going to eat you. And the bird flies off very fast indeed and looks for a meal elsewhere. So those are very big eye spots and they're very frightening and they protect the moth which is otherwise completely harmless because they make it look as if it's fierce. Well, what about eye small eye spots? You find them on, not moths, but but butterflies and you find them along the edge of the wings like this. Lots of them on all sorts of butterflies. They're not frightening at all, but look at where they are. Have a closer look. Right out on the tips of the wings. And if a bird is going to eat those butterflies, the chances are it's going to attack the small eye spots. Because to a bird, that's the most vulnerable part of the butterfly. And for the butterfly, that's fine, because it can lose a wingtip without uh, any pain at all, but it can't stand an attack on the head, because that would kill it. And so sacrificial eye spots are small, and they're put out right on the side. And lots of animals have them. If you go along the beach, you might find at certain seasons, the crabs have been casting off their coats. The crab's OK. This is just uh, changing its clothes for new ones. There are the real eyes up the front of the crab, but down the back it's got these false eye spots. Very prominent. They're not big enough to be frightening, but they are prominent enough to attract attention. And something like an octopus that would come in and go for the crab will spend its time busily attacking the armour plate down here, while the real eyes and the head are left unchallenged. So, eyes in the back of your head can be useful. I want to know.